As part of my ongoing research and study into pass keys, I also wanted to delve into the pros and cons of using pass keys versus using passwords with multi-factor authentication for account security and show you a couple of demos to explain the differences. Now, over the past couple of months, I have really delved into understanding pass keys as the next generation of account authentication and security. So if you are not familiar with pass keys, you can follow along with my pass key series on my channel right here on YouTube. Now, Yubico is sponsoring this episode and I am working with them to learn all about pass keys. This is an ongoing series that explains what pass keys are, how they work, and the different types of pass keys that can be used. With Yubico, my intention is to be on the cusp of this new security method since this will likely be our very near future. So stick around to snag a coupon code from Yubico and learn how you can use their keys for both multi-factor authentication as well as pass keys. So in this ultimate showdown between passwords and MFA versus pass keys, which one is best? So let's go ahead and dive into the pros and cons of both of them to find out. Was that really corny? I think it was. Oh well. First up is passwords. <laughs> now, passwords have been around in some form or another long before even the internet was a thing. Long before I was downloading music on my dad's computer in the 1990s on dial-up. You know the drill. <laughs> passwords are strings of characters that you have created and remembered to prove your identity or authenticate with an online account. You create them in your mind or you can generate them in a password manager. I highly recommend doing the second. And you either remember them using your own noggin or you stick them all in a notebook or password manager. Then you add in multi-factor authentication or MFA. You input a password and a website then asks you for some kind of six digit code that is either sent to your phone via text, which is the least secure option because of SIM swapping. I did a whole video about that. It's generated in an application on your phone like Google Authenticator or Authy, for example, both of those are free apps or your MFA is a security key like a Yubi key that you plug into your computer or your phone or you tap on it to prove that you not only know your password, but you also have access to a physical thing that you have in your possession to enter. Now the pros, passwords are extremely familiar. Everybody knows how to use passwords. We have used them for ages. They are flexible. You can generate them with tons of creativity. Like you can combine uppercase and lowercase and numbers and special characters. You can make passwords extremely long, hundreds of characters even, assuming that a website will accept longer characters. And they work on all of your devices as long as there is some sort of human interface device like a physical keyboard or a on-screen keyboard. But the cons of passwords just by themselves is passwords can be somewhat weak, very weak. Weak passwords think something like password one, two, three is kind of like leaving your front door wide open for attackers and hackers. And do not get me started on password reuse. If you use the same password for everything or even something that is very, very similar, but not quite the same. It's like using the same key for your home, your car, and your secret vault. Even longer passwords can be cracked using today's technology. And we often do not know how a website is actually storing our passwords. While they should be encrypted, they should, many sites leave passwords in plain text. So we have learned to use different passwords for everything that we do. But because of that, passwords are so hard to memorize. So people tend to reuse a fallback password as their default one. If you use that password across several sites and one of those sites gets hacked, then your password reuse could allow a hacker to just copy and paste it onto other sites and potentially allow them to get access to more of your accounts all from one hack. So this is why we recommend as security advocates using a password manager, but it's really hard to get folks to adopt something that they are not familiar with. Maybe your cousin has adopted the mindset of every password should be different, but only uses a slightly different character at the end of their very common password. Or maybe they just write them all down in a notepad or they save them all in the notepad app on their phone. The phone notepad app 
could be stolen and a notepad could get destroyed in a flood or a fire. So having a secure platform like a password manager is a must for password management, especially if you want to really use strong passwords that are hard to guess. So then when you add in multi-factor authentication or MFA, this adds a layer of security to your account because even if a hacker did get your password, they probably do not have the six digit code that you are sent through your phone. So they still get locked out. With MFA, the biggest pro is that added security, but even MFA has its drawbacks. For example, it's less convenient. Instead of just typing in your password and entering, there is another step to authenticate. There is a second page. You either have to type in that six digit code that you get sent on your phone, or you tap on a physical device like one of these. And if you type in the wrong code, then you have to wait for a new one to get sent, or you have to quickly retype the correct code before it's deemed invalid, and then you have to request a new one anyway. Now, if you use a hardware key like any of the ones that I have here, like a YubiKey, this can circumvent the complications of having to type in a code, since there is no code if a website supports my favorite authentication protocol. And they are more secure, since a hacker would not have a code to steal. They would have to physically steal your YubiKey. But of course, that's a device that you would need to have on you whenever you're setting up a new device. Now, luckily, with any MFA option that you choose, our devices will remember our logins. So you usually only need to use that code or that YubiKey whenever you're setting up a new device or when your computer or your phone forgets your login. This is because of how cookies work, which I also did a whole video on. So TLDR, passwords on their own, are familiar to us, but they can be vulnerable to hackers. Adding MFA is a great option for security, but the caveat is convenience for that additional security. Now let's turn the key, get it, to a new contender, which is called Pass keys. Similar to our ultra MFA option, these can also be used with a physical device like a USB key or a phone to verify your identity. They are the fresh alternative to passwords, promising an extra layer of security. So let's highlight the pros of pass keys. These take the approach of two-factor authentication, something that you have, which is the pass key, and something you know, like a pin or something you are, like a biometric. Since the something you know, like a password can be stolen, making the something you have the first factor to log into a website creates a more secure method for authentication. Because without that pass key, that something you have, nobody can get to the second part where you either have to input your PIN or a biometric to log in. When you use a pass key, there is no more memorizing complex passwords or keeping that ever growing password list hidden underneath your keyboard. The pass key for every single site is unique and it uses your phone or your USB key as the pass key. So the nice part of using a USB security key as a pass key is that an attacker would physically need that USB key to unlock an account and a USB key used as a pass key is never uploaded anywhere. It is always just stored on your physical security key. The other perk of pass keys is that they do not leave your device. So even if a website does get hacked, that website can't give up your secret key like they could a pass password. I delved into that more in my what are pass keys video. But pass keys are not without their challenges. First off, if you opt to use your phone as a pass key, you also can have Apple or Google store your pass key in a virtual server or the cloud. So if you lose your phone, you could have access to it from another device. That's great for convenience, but you have to make sure that your phone account is also extremely secure. You don't want somebody buying an iPhone and logging into your Apple ID and then stealing your pass key. Then of course is expense. Your phone has to be pass key ready, which most phones from newer generations already are, or you purchase a separate hardware security key to be used as a pass key. Now my viewers do have access to a sweet deal through Yubico though, which will get you $5 off the purchase of any Series 5 YubiKeys with the coupon code Shannon Morse, all one word at checkout, and I will put that on the screen so you can just copy it there. That can save you some money and you will be buying a product that 
that not only can be used as a pass key, but you can also use the same key as a multi-factor authentication device for tons of different websites. Now there are going to be compatibility issues. Pass keys are still in their infancy. And because of that, not all devices or apps will support pass keys. So hopefully the sites support MFA at the least so that you have something more secure than just a password. But just like with MFA, you won't need a pass key every single time you open an app or browse to a website. Apps and websites often remember our logins from a known device. So as long as you aren't switching devices all the time, you won't need your pass key every single day. So do we choose passwords with MFA or do we choose pass keys? I think that both of them have their merits and they have their downsides. Passwords are the weakest form of authentication, but with with MFA tacked on, they can offer strong security, though convenience could be better. On the other hand, pass keys are more convenient since they are built into newer phones and USB keys, and because there is no password to remember, but they are not supported everywhere yet. Once pass keys are supported everywhere, it'll be like having one ring to rule them all, but that one ring will actually have all sorts of different keys inside of it, and each key can only be used on one site. So you just need one ring to unlock them all. So in the end, the choice depends on your personal needs. Do you got accounts with money in them? Do you have accounts like your email where important documents are sent? Pass keys might be your new BFF, but they still might not be supported on all of those sites. For social media and light online shopping, a password with multi-factor authentication is probably okay. And for those sites where neither MFA or pass keys are supported, using a password manager to generate those strong, unique passwords and to store them all so you don't run out of RAM in your own mind, very important. So are you team pass key or or team password with MFA, or are you both? For me, I'm kind of both with the intent to become team passkey 100% whenever that becomes a reality. Tell me which option you prefer by commenting down below. Huge thanks to Yubico for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much for watching and subscribing. Bye, y'all.